Hello viewers of this video and welcome back to the Redstone Innovation Channel. Today I'm happy to show you um, a really compact portcullis that we made actually quite a while ago. Um, the reason being we are the reason we are releasing this now is because well I read the channel comments and I actually found that somebody requested uh, requested one of us and this was just lying around so I'm like well, might as well record it this week. And also, I didn't really have anything else to record because we're still working on our other stuff. So, be prepared to see the smallest 4x4 in Minecraft. Um, a whole compilation of 3x3 three three doors. And as well as some other cool stuff. I might be doing some survival, which I... <laughs> if you don't know already, I have never played survival. So just let that sink in for a moment. I I built my clock before I did survival, but um, I'll be <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I um, at this point might be doing a survival series. So that might be new. If you guys are interested, so leave me uh, leave me a comment telling me what what I should do. As well as um, requests too in the channel comments, that be that would be quite neat because there's only a few people that have commented there now, and well, that one guy he's probably really happy now because I I am I'm doing as he says I am making a video on this portcullis. So here we go. It's pretty fast and very low latency too. Late. Latency being the delay betwe between when you press the button and it does something. In fact, it's only one tick. Or it should be, anyway. Anyway, so here's the wire. Pretty happy with it. It's four wide. And it's also pretty flexible, too. Um, so four wide means you have more precious above ground room as well as below ground, especially if you're building one of those massive castles, because I obviously have no architecture skills. I like I I filled it in and I was done. <laughs> so here's the explanation of the circuits. So to control these um, blocks uh, that are floating three up, to control these blocks floating three up, we have all these up here, which will push down like that using this torch tower and this T flip flop so when you press the button it's gonna flip this T flip flop and power these which will actually prevent the these bottom ones from going so every time you press the button it's going to go through the same monostable and send a pulse all the way down through here and into the blue and green circuits so when you press the button you'll actually see that this triggers every single time you press the button. So I thought that was kinda neat. It allows for more simple um, simple control circuits which I uh, which really helps when you're, when you're trying to make something that's supposed to be compact. So you press the button, T flip flop, orange circuit, got all that. Uh, purple circuit is the control circuit with the monostable. Blue circuit controls the extension of those three pistons, which will push these gates back up. And the green is to control these pistons stacking back up, so that you then again have a flat floor of sand. Oh goodness. So, um, let's get into the tutorial on this, shall we? All right, so here we are. Let's let's get going. Um, ignore that stuff, please. I just needed a flat sandstone world to build the tutorial on, and the glass roof is pretty nice. But anyway, that's completely off subject. Let's get let's let's get to it. So to uh, so to start off with, you're first going to decide where you want your portcullis. So um, it will be somewhere above and. You're going to start off by placing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, actually, any number. 
You can expand this up to a certain number. I'm not entirely sure, but for now, I'm just going to make it five, five long. So you're going to start off with five sticky pistons facing upward, then five more on top, and then, whoops, and then five regular pistons on top of that. So once you've got that, um, I'm just going to go into the blue circuit, and the blue circuit is the extension of these pistons, if you remember. So you're going to do that, blocks blocks there, and adjacent to these ones here, the top ones. So on the bottom and the top ones, um, place rows of blocks, and then finally leave one block space on top of these, and do this one more time. So when these extend, it'll push these uh, the second row into uh, adjacent to this, and then when the second one extends, it'll push these pistons adjacent to this, which will power all of them. And what we're going to do is just lead redstone across on all of them. So there you go. Um, now what we're going to do is gonna extend this out by one and then place a repeater and a block behind that so this is going to be your input block at the very end and so yeah that's gonna be your input block at the very end on top of this input block torch torch and then block so Block on top of torch, torch on set on top of said block, and then block on top of said torch with redstone on top. Make it day. And then from this torch, it's gonna go directly into a repeater here, which will be powering a block, powering this redstone here, which is important. Then finally, this redstone's going to lead directly into a repeater on two with redstone, just leading directly in there. And this should be your entire extension process. Let's test it out. So there you go, all of them are extended. Now what we need to do is control it retracting again. So you can see here, it obviously does not retract. So that's where the green circuit comes in. And what we're going to do to keep these pistons on and these pistons on is take a signal from the top of on two. Um, block in front of this repeater. Well, this is fed by this redstone here, by the way. And put a block in front of this repeater. And this is just going to lead over like this. Make sure it is not level. So it's going to go boom, 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 boom. So it's not adjacent to this second one here. It's actually one up. Then what we're going to do, this repeater is going to be powering redstone down here. And then it's going to be powering a repeater right here on two, which is why you can't have redstone here because then that will be powering it. And actually, now I need blue wool again. So that should ex that should control that. Huh. Oh, okay. Wow, I didn't replace that again. I am really stupid. So there you go. That's that. Um, that's that. And then now we need these to fire once more to grab these. And the way we're gonna do that is by a mono stable, and that's gonna be green. So. Um, now, when the pistons are in this state, make sure these the pistons are in this state, or just one above the ground, um, block there with redstone like this, and that's going to control that final extension uh, with this torch here, which will work in the end. I'm not sure why that did that, but anyway. Repeater going into this torch on three. Block behind it with redstone on top. And then from this input block, delete it directly with a repeater on four. 
into this block too. And what's also going to go into this block is okay. So this repeater is powering this redstone. It's going to lead across one torch there, and that's going to be your mono stable. So there you go. That extends and retracts. And now we can fill this in the sand. So your floor is going to be. Don't need to close to them. Your floor is going to be one above here. So here's your floor right there. So you can just fill in your sand to, up to meet that. And you can plan accordingly on the other side. Whoops. So basically, this is just a modified version of our design challenge episode one, which is the 3x3 three three door. So that extends. And that actually falls perfectly. So it falls just like Pear Squirrels does. So it just falls directly down. And now, let's move on into the purple circuit which is the control circuit leading down into the the extender down here okay so here we are in the purple circuit um to lead power into this blue circuit we're going to do that by let's cut out these blocks we're going to do that by block here this block is going to be powered this redstone this block is going to be powered this by this repeater here this repeater is going to have a block behind it with redstone on top. And of course, as I always say, if I'm going too fast for you, please feel free, uh, feel free to pause. Because that's what that button is there for. And so this repeater is going to have block behind it with redstone on top. This redstone is going to have a block on top and a block to the side. Repeater on two which is going to have a block behind it with redstone on top and a block on top and red and a block to the side and a repeater on too which is going to have a block behind it with redstone on top which is going to have a block on top and a block to the side with a repeater on four so <laughs> uh, doing something like that so basically your power is just going to run down through here and then finally go into here now this repeater can be powered by a block and redstone there. And now we're actually going to um, connect this to the monostable in a moment. Now one block away, one block gap, and adjacent to this repeater here, you're going to have a block so adjacent to this repeater in the blue circuit, just going to have a block right there with redstone on top. And this is going to be your input block in the end. So you're going to lead power into it like this. I'll explain that later. And So this redstone is going to be powering this repeater. And... This repeater, which is going to have a block in front with a torch there and a block on top. Now this block, which you power both, um, you power this redstone and this block at the same time when you have a repeater here. So this block is going to be powering this repeater on four or three actually I think. We can mess with that later. And then it's going to be powering this repeater on three which will be powering this torch there and there you go so you saw there extended and retracted all smooth like and that's how that works and then now what we can do is take a torch there block on top and we're gonna have a sticky piston for a T flip flop like that and if you press the button it spits out the block and also does that every single time. Now that is the bulk of the wiring done. Let's go and work 
on the top of the orange circuit. All right, as I said, I was going to explain before. Um, you're going to lead power it into it like this. So repeater, you're going to be powering this block and this redstone down below. And you can do that on the same side here. But here, make sure that this does not connect because that will create a clock. And you know, redstone innovation loves clocks, but this is a bad clock. So um, I do that by usually doing something like this, and then this is your aisle, this is your aisle here. So this is your wall, and you can place your button right here. So this could be on the inside or something. But either way, you can do that by uh, insulated by a repeater. You can insulate it by redstone leading into this block which is powering this repeater. You can do it a whole assortment of ways, but the way I'm going to do it is just block behind right now. Like that. You can do that here. And just so that we can get on with the tutorial. Let's just do that. Now let's do fence gates. Let, let's, let's enjoy putting up some fence gates. So just how many rows? Let me go and check real fast. Whoop. So that's three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then on top of here, you can place your wall block, your material that you're building, whatever this is, um, your castle, whatever. That's going to be that material there. And then when you press this button, that's going to extend like that and leave these floating like this. Um, this is how I control um, where to place the pistons. So now we know we can just build four blocks up, cut one, two, three. And from this block, underneath it, three regular pistons. And now, uh, these will fire from this T flip flop and push down. And you'll see it working in a moment. But here we go. This is the orange circuit. 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 So this block will be powering, well, this torch is going to be powering this block, which is then going to be powering that. And then leading up via torch tower. Make sure the last one you stop on is going to be. Actually, you can stop right here. This is going to be off. Okay? So make sure that is off. Then you can lead power over like this. There's a whole crop of ways you can do this. So something like this. And then. This redstone's where this. Um, this redstone is adjacent to this second row of pistons and these blocks are on the third one when it's at rest and we can do this redstone is going to power down here repeater on two i want to say and then finally this is going to be your ceiling material and you can place redstone here and repeater on two i think you might have to change those later. And that is how you connect up those circuits. And let's watch it retract. So there you go. There is your portcullis, fellas. Fellas. And we can actually modify this so that... So that this is going to be your ceiling. And that's typically the way I do it. I like it so when it pushes, these blocks blocks are flush. Or these blocks that the pistons are pushing are flush. I like that look. And there you go. There's your uh, working portcullis. 
So one real quick thing that I'm going to mention actually is, um, in you, as you saw on my server, I did have this extended probably maybe 11 blocks instead of just 5 across here. And that's really easy to do. All you need is more pistons. More pistons. And let's get some fence gauge. And so basically what we're going to do is just... Um, so if you remember, these these two bottom run, these two bottom ones are actually sticky pistons. This top one is a regular piston. So if you want to extend it farther out, just extend it. There's a certain limit to how far you can extend it, but um, you can experiment with it until it stops working on the farthest side. Just cut that off, and then you know that's where you can, where you can stop, or where you should stop. So basically, you're just going to extend this out. So two rows of sticky pistons, a row of regular pistons, and then a whole bunch of sand. Well, not a whole bunch. A bit of sand. And then you just delete your wall. And let's... I'm just going to extend these signals here. So it's really easy to expand. Just extend these existing signals, and it should work. And if it doesn't, then I have absolutely no idea. So like that. Um, then you do the top. So these are all regular pistons with their blocks and fence gates. Or not, why do I always say fence gates? Just fences. Let's go ahead and test it out. Let's put it in our floor. This is actually supposed to be sand right here. There you go. That's bizarre. Oh, I didn't extend it up here. What am I saying? So, something like that. So obviously you would have this extended up here. I was just really lazy. Might as well do that, I guess. But anyway, you guys get the point, right? So just extend these signals out. Make sure they power the pistons there. And that's how you do that. So jump cutting the interesting filling in of this portcullis. Um, well, here it is. Um, while I was... Um, so, yeah, uh, while I was playing around on my server, I noticed that you can change some timings. Uh, you can make this 4, 2, 1, and 1, which does speed up the opening process by one tick, but I'm sure you guys won't really notice the difference. It's just a tenth of a second. And also, it might be helpful in case they change the way that torches work or something like... If you're on a server um, and the torch tower is going to lag out, then you're going to need more delay in here. So just to give you a little cushion, just make that on two. And if it still doesn't work, if it gives you funny behavior like, like these timings would, so where the sand goes up and the portcullis doesn't go all the way down, that is because this bottom part isn't on enough of a delay. So... Just give you two ticks in each of those for a bit of room. Um, that was really bizarre. Okay, huge lag spike. Anyway, just give you those to have a little cushion of room. Um, comfort space. And also, one thing I will mention is that on servers it will create ghost sand. So you may notice a layer of sand right here, um, but when you place blocks next to them, so if you update that sand, that, si that sand is actually only client side, but you cannot walk through it, so it's a little bit weird. But anyway, to get rid of that phantom sand, all you need to do is change this timing here to 3, so from this top one, 
used to be on four, change it to three. And then also you're gonna want to change this repeater here from the signal that goes down into the bottom one, if you remember. Uh, this one will also be on three. So that should that should help it. So you can see there it op it opens a little bit differently. It gives a it gives it a little bump as it's opening, and that's going to help prevent the sand. I'm not gonna say it's gonna completely stop it because you know it's never gonna no fix is ever gonna fix anything 100% of the time. There's gonna be the occasional time where it's gonna decide to be stupid, but offline it should definitely work on two here and four here. as it does right now. So this is the Redstone Innovation channel. Hope you I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, and make sure to show your support for more content in the future. Um, as always, we thank you for watching.